Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey. Today we have a very special market rundown for you, covering silver, gold, and China, as we do have breaking news from China that will have significant impact on our markets, if not today, then very soon. But let's start with the dollar is down four basis points at 100 spot 86, 87. Ten-year yields are up four basis points at 379.8. S&P 500 is 57.26, up nine handles. The VIX is 15.92, essentially unchanged. Gold is down three bucks at 26.25. New all-time high print and close yesterday. Silver, 30 spot 82, up 14 cents. A bounce, not on the highs right now. Copper, up 10 cents, 442. Up 2.4%. This is China. Gold, silver down a little bit after really screaming yesterday. WTI 73.24, up a buck 40. Natural gas 256 flat. Bitcoin up 195 at 63 spot 500. Ethereum 26.40 down six bucks. Palladium up 16 at 10.55. And platinum up 13, 971. Grains are all up. Let's see how that shifts out there. Pretty even, looks like allocations. 1057, 403, and that's 588 for wheat, 589 for wheat, up 30, 20, and 30 basis points, all three of them. The chart you're looking at there before we get to the stories is basically a snapshot of China. Top left-hand side, that's the 10-year yield. Their bond yields have been going down uh, for a long time in a reflection of their recession their uh, lack of growth, their risk of deflation, and their housing market uh, crumbling. Top right-hand side, that's the SSC. That's the Shanghai, uh, I'm not sure what the expression is, the Shanghai uh, special zone for trade. Well, that's the daily chart, and you can see what happened there when the news came out. Uh, lower right-hand quadrant, same thing. I don't know why I had that there. And Oh, I know what, this should be... This should be the Hang Seng. There we go. Back to normal. Now, where were we? Where were we? You're not here for the production value, folks. You're here for the uh, insight, for lack of a better word. And there's gold on the left, lower left quadrant, uh, making a new all-time high yesterday making another new all-time high last night and now backing off the highs. Okay, the takeaway from this snapshot is China stimulated. And this time, the China stimulus really is attempting to focus on the stock market. Why do I say that? Because gold made a new all-time high, but gold did not follow through, whereas the stock market there followed through. They we're going to get to what they did in a minute because it's not even it's not even the head story today. OK, the head story is this is the silver hat, right? Silver. All right. Uh, let's get to it. There's the title page. All that glitters, Rabo giving some attention to gold, wondering about correlations. Uh, we have the answers for that embedded in that post. Uh, lower left-hand side, creepy. Remember the last time the Fed cut 50 basis points? Uh, we do, and uh, we wrote about it. And top center must read, Goldman starts the ETF tsunami. Yesterday was, in our opinion, we discussed it, but we'll discuss it a little bit more now for a second. Uh, for the last, here. Just read the first sentence. It's all you really need to read. If the other recent bank analyses covered at Goldfix, Citibank, MUFG, Goldman Sachs, BOA, UBS, were setups for American ETF flows, then the brief comment attached by the Goldman Sachs Equity Desk Friday opens the floodgates. That's all you need to know. Americans are buying. All right. Uh, there's actually a story uh, by Zero Hedge facing the public that you can see that's very good. And it covers the topics that we'd covered as well. 
uh, premium analysis, the silver bullet. In a report by Goldman Sachs published for institutional clients yesterday, they said prior to the September Federal Reserve meeting, speculative positioning in silver futures surged. Managed money dominated, with producers reiterating a tighter physical balance, lower U.S. real rates, and the dollar served as incremental catalysts. After the Fed delivered a 50 basis point cut, silver price extended higher. However, flow indicators were more mixed, and notably, term structure has yet to reflect the stress system. There's That's a summary. There's a lot packed into that, and these are all topics that we're comfortable talking about, but let's just put it this way in a in a way that hopefully you can understand. Manage money bought this market before the Fed rate cut. They were betting on a big rate cut and they were betting on silver. Silver producers are having a hard time producing. There is a tighter physical balance coming from them. Lower U.S. real rates and the dollar served as incremental catalysts. Over the past two years, you've been hearing people, especially us, probably at the forefront, saying that rates don't matter, the dollar doesn't matter, they're buying because they want the gold, they want the silver. Well, now they matter, and they matter because the physical demand is there, and the physical demand has raised the floor on all these commodities. Now, the correlation will come back for the dollar because American investors look at correlations. And American investors are now saying, well, the dollar's lower. I should put my money somewhere else. So this is a boomer buy order, right? Not just boomers, but that's part of it. After the Fed delivered a 50 basis point cut, silver extended higher. Correct. You have to assume some of them sold as well. However, flow indicators were more mixed and notably term structure. That's what I just said. Flow indicators were more mixed. But the managed money started to liquidate. So now it's a battle between boomers buying and managed money selling. And notably, term structure has yet to reflect the stress system. Lovely statement from personal history. When you see Goldman talking, how many times have I said when you see Goldman talking about uh, copper shortages, they're buying silver? Because term structure being stressed is a reflection of a short squeeze meaning the backwardation has to come. And we will see that first in the EFP, something that Bob Coleman and I uh, share on Twitter a lot, but something that goes way back in my DNA. A couple pictures for you to look at from that report. All right, what you're looking at here is ETF holdings of silver. Now you see the run-up. This is September. The This is, see right here, the sell-off in the red rectangle? That's when the news came out of the 50 basis point cut. But you see this? This is the run-up before, okay? This is ETF holdings of silver. You can see that they're buying it again. Still nowhere near all-time highs, but they're buying it again. Second chart. Harder to see because I did a little negative of it, but this is managed money uh, and correlated with silver price. The brighter, uh, we'll call that the greenish blue line that is a reflection of um uh managed money getting in and the darker blue line which may be harder for you to see right now is the actual silver price if you look a little closely and you take out your pencil uh, you will see that managed money tends to lead price uh in silver so they'll buy then it will go up especially when u.s investors are not playing Third one, this is the physical uh, silver inventory in the COMEX. Now, it has been building recently, and we also said that that would happen about a year ago because the flow out of the U.S. trickled out, and so now they're building it up. So it's kind of like they're replenishing the silver for the next outflow when it comes. Now, where it will go, we don't know. In 22, it went to India. In 23, it went to China. And 21, it probably went to China as well. But that chart there, uh, we're looking at that little red rectangle, and we're seeing that it's starting to drain again. If the drain starts again uh, with a corresponding EFP tightening, that's the physical versus the futures, uh, you will see uh, you will see silver 
start to rock it. Now, what we're hoping for, a little aside moment, is we are in sell season. It doesn't feel like we're in sell season because we're going up, but there are sellers and there are shorts, especially uh, in silver. That's the CTA analysis. If we get to October and silver is low relative to gold and the EFP is bid again like it was in 22, look out. We can rock it higher. We have much more on that and the key points from that report summarized at bottom for Goldfix premium subscribers. Next story. China bazooka. There are three stories as usual. We put here, not as usual, but we're doing it now. Three stories. Right China's policy bazooka is back. Just reading. China will set up a swap facility allowing securities, securities for funds, firms, funds, and insurance companies to tap liquidity from PBOC to buy stocks. The story is China bazooka is back. PBOC cuts everything to prop stocks. We put that out this morning. There is a very good summary quote from Zero Hedge in their post. And here it is. The PBOC will set up a swap facility allowing securities firms, funds, and insurance companies to tap liquidity from PBOC to buy stocks. Brokers, funds, and insurers will be allowed to pledge assets in exchange for liquidity for funds and buy stocks. The PBOC will also set up a separate specialized financing facility for listed companies and major shareholders to buy back shares raising holdings. Quote, Beijing is greenlighting direct intervention in the stock market to prop up stocks. Zero hedge. That's it. All the other stuff you're going to read, if you go to the mainstream media, and why the hell do you do that anymore? But if you go to the mainstream media, it's going to say, uh, China steps in to prop stocks. Here's what markets did. Here's what markets did. We can tell you that. We're going to tell you that right now. We actually already did. But the key is this. This statement here, again, an excellent summary. The statement here says they're adapting, adopting the U.S. model to prop stocks up. They're encouraging banks to borrow money to buy stocks. They're encouraging those same banks to pledge assets to borrow money to buy stocks. That will be gold. Okay. Uh, among other things, and bonds, among other things, all right? They're also, as rates drop, they're also reducing reserve requirements. So instead of having to have uh, a billion yuan to service 10 billion uh, in assets, I mean, a, a billion yuan on hand to service 10 billion in reserves, they're going to lower to 500 million yuan, okay, to service. So they're going to cut Reserve requirements in half, which unlocks uh, more capital. And down the road, it creates bubbles and risk, but we're not at that stage yet, okay? This is extremely significant. And from a, from a commodity point of view, I want to stress this. In the past, having lived it, every time China did something to stimulate their economy, it was geared towards housing. It was geared towards uh, commercial real estate ghost cities and what have you. And it kept their people working and it propped their economy up as a building economy. Well, that can only go so far. But during those time periods, we would buy iron ore, buy a copper, buy silver, and then finally buy gold. You would see it overnight. China's banks would get the word that this would happen and they would just step in and buy industrial commodities, oil, right? Uh, this time, although industrial commodities are stronger, copper, uh, uh, being the point, uh, they're not as strong as stocks are. The money from this, these facilities they're creating is getting towards the things they want to prop up. And it's interesting because this is what they have to do to avoid letting in outside money. They must almost literally tell their banks to buy stocks, right? And the banks will then eventually start telling their people to buy stocks. And that's the American model. So anything we can do, they can do better. Next story. There are three stories. I just want to touch on this one. Indy reports record gold imports in August. People are talking about this now. Uh, Indy reported record gold imports in August after the country slashed its import duty. We reported what would happen 
two months ago on this, probably a month ago. Uh, but here's the most important takeaway is that in doing that analysis, we noticed something very interesting. Uh, India cut their import tariffs. India started buying more. And we had also noted prior to this that India started buying gold when China stopped. So China's saying we're not buying gold anymore. We're just open the door to another well to buy gold. But the most interesting thing is if you look at Gold demand by India going back to 2021 per quarter, it has been stable every quarter for three years. Implicitly, they don't care about the price. They want the gold. So if gold is cheap, they're going to buy 200 tons. If gold is expensive, they're going to buy 200 tons. They don't care about the price. They're in it to accumulate. Their demand is inelastic. They're buying it for something. And that something is Enbridge. Okay? We're not talking about a luxury good here. We're not talking about, I have extra money, I'm going to buy some jewelry. We're talking about print the rupees to buy the gold. We don't care how many rupees it costs to buy the gold. Just print them. Okay? That's the story. We know what they did. They bought a lot of gold. We know why they did it. And we know what they're doing with it. That's all you really need to know about what's going on here. And the third story, believe it or not, the least special story, but probably the most interesting to read is the rally in gold seems unstoppable at this point. That's a zero hedge story. And that's open to the public as well. All right. There's a lot here. Data on deck, uh, Case Shiller Home Price Index, 20 cities. Yesterday's PMI, just a quick comment about that. Yesterday's PMI uh, came in, uh, you could call it stagflationary. The PMIs were weak. The, the manufacturing construction were weak, but the cost of goods were strong. So it was an inflationary PMI report. It's, and those are very current events, okay? Uh, the premium section uh, will have a lot more picks and some more... Uh, commentary about that report later. Checking back with the markets, uh, give you a little, give you a little chart uh, to look at there. There's the one day uh, Hang Seng. That's the most watched one, right? Notice it ran up for 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 hours, and they have limits, I think. So, uh, look at the one hour, right? Uh, look at the one week. Right, still like still near the lows, right? And then look at the one month. We've got a long way to go uh, for for Chinese stocks. So it might be good. People talk about China stocks uh, relative to the emerging markets situation. Well, now you can start looking at China as the United States of America in the emerging markets area. Dear Bricks. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. You will be long yuan, you will buy Chinese stocks, and uh, you will uh, do trade with them. Uh, all the roads lead to Beijing now. All right. Uh, little love for gold there. That's the one month. Let's look at the uh, one hour. Throw some lines up. This is... Silver, uh, I was worried about this this uh, area here. It broke it. It broke it again. It worked back up, retested it. That's really actually pretty solid. Um, if you want to be like you know clear and simple about it, draw a trend line here and say below this trend line, don't be long, right? If you want to be uh, a little bit more of a pullback buyer, uh, you're a you can consider buying here. And then you'd get you'd literally get short under here for a quick trade down to here. Uh, and if the market were to break, my price was 30.49. Remember I said that? Well, it was right. Unfortunately, we didn't get above it. Where was that? 30.49. 30.50 was where we have. Yeah. We didn't make this high. We didn't make, take that new high out. And so well, silver sold off. So next time up, we've got to take it out. I would check on momentum indicators and things like that. 
to see if this is a retracement or not. Bollinger Bands will help you with that. All right. Uh, I'm Vince. Have a great day.